Hey guys, so today we got a viewer requested video. This comment is from Lasset Unspielen. It sounds German to me. And this person says, you sound like you know what you're talking about. Which I do. Could you make a comprehensive video about the differences in terminology? What's a terrarium, vivarium, paludarium, faunarium, etc.? Thanks for the comment. This is actually a very good question. Probably one of the first things that comes to my mind is that there's a lot of whole bunch of different ariums out there. They all have kind of a similar sounding name, like terrarium, paludarium, whatever arium. I'm guessing the terminology is probably a bit confusing, if especially if it's the first time you're seeing them. I know when I first saw these words, uh, I was like, What's going on here? And I want to focus in on that suffix, arium. So that's a Latin suffix that means container. And that kind of gives you a clue as to what all these different words mean. It's basically saying it's a container of something. These are all different containers that are meant to support some kind of life of some sort, whether that be plants or animals or insects. Um, and each one has different purpose behind what it intends to grow and raise. And because their intents are different, the environmental conditions inside of that container are going to be a little bit different. So you might see a little differences in lighting, the temperature, humidity, water levels, even the types of plants that go in there. So obviously there's going to be a little bit of overlap between them. Sometimes different ariums might have a similar purpose, but maybe they're trying to grow plants rather than reptiles, and they'll call it a terrarium. So really the key difference here is what is the intent behind the container? And that's really going to help you determine what you're supposed to call that that container that you're using to raise something. And the other piece of the arium words that you also want to look at is a prefix. And a prefix is what comes before the arium. Uh, so you have terrarium, paludarium, oceanarium, aquarium. There's even insectariums, which are intended to raise insects. And I've actually written a, a blog post about that, which I'll leave a link to in the description if you want to read more about that. And essentially that prefix is going to tell you exactly what that container is intending to do. And I'm going to get into that with a few examples. So let's start with the first one, which is what I'm all about, is terrariums. So if you've seen any of my other videos, you kind of get an idea of what a terrarium is. It's essentially a sealed container that's intended to grow plants of some sort. And basically the whole idea is you want to put some soil in there, uh, maybe have a drainage layer in there, put some plants in there, and essentially you're going to seal the container up and the water that's already in the container is going to recycle itself by evaporating, condensing on the sides of the container, then trickling back down into the soil where the plants can absorb that, only to restart the cycle over and over again in an endless loop. That's kind of the idea behind a terrarium. The next one I want to talk about is a vivarium, and that's another one that you might see come across if you're ever googling terrariums, you might see the word vivarium come up. And I think this one is a, a little bit more of a broad sweeping definition. Vivarium essentially means a container that's meant to sustain living creatures or some kind of life, some kind of plant or animal. Uh, sometimes you'll see it in the context of for research purposes. But the reason I want to talk about vivariums is because it's a really broad type of word. Um, living creatures, that could be pretty much anything. A boat's a boat, but the mystery box could be anything. It could even be a boat. You know how much we've wanted one of those. And how I kind of view vivariums is that um, any sort of arium that you see out there is kind of like a subset of vivarium. Um, it's a very special type of vivarium. Even a terrarium you could think about that as a type of vivarium. One thing that I've kind of noticed while browsing the internet, doing my Googling, Google it, guys, is that vivarium uh, usually refers to some kind of t container that has a type of animal in there. Um, so uh, typically like reptiles of some sort. Um, that's kind of the context that I've seen the word used. But I think formally the word means to refer any type of living creature inside of the container. Another really big one that I want to just throw out there is aquarium. And I'm sure you've heard of the word aquarium before. It's essentially a fish tank uh, that's meant to grow and uh, raise fish. And you might sometimes see uh, some aquatic plants in there. And even the word aquarium is a pretty broad word. There's actually a couple of other ariums that are subsets of aquariums. So you have things like oceanariums, and then you even have things like dolphinariums. 
And yes, that, that's a real word. Uh, it's a real thing. You can go look it up. An aquarium is kind of like the word vivarium. It's a little bit more of a broad word that covers um, any type of fish life underwater um, or aquatic plant life. And the word oceanarium is actually a subset of aquarium because that's actually referring to those larger creatures that you would see like going to a public aquarium like the Monterey Bay Aquarium or something like that, where you'll see animals like whales or sharks or huge fish or things like that. And that's typically what an oceanarium would describe. And then dolphinarium is exactly what it sounds like. That's specifically for raising dolphins. Okay, another one that I want to talk about is something called a paludarium. A paludarium is essentially kind of a swamp-like or more water intensive terrarium. So one definition that I saw was that it's like a semi-aquatic enclosure uh, that intends to replicate the environment of a rainforest or uh, some kind of wetlands. So I think the idea is these are typically meant to grow plants that are probably seen along riverbanks or plants that you might see in a very wet jungle or wetland or something. And another one that's pretty similar to a paludarium is called a riparium. And because the differences are so similar, I'm going to read the definition directly that I found off of Wikipedia. It says, it's a new kind of planted aquarium system that recreates the wet habitats found along the edges of lakes, rivers, ponds, and streams. Unlike a paludarium, however, riparians do not have a significant land portion, making them unsuitable for most amphibians. Instead, they utilize specialized planters, which either hang onto the sides of the tank or float on the water surface. So the way I kind of interpret that is a riparium is like a paludarium, but there's even more of a focus on the water. Um, and there's almost no land component in there too that would be suitable for growing or raising uh, some amphibians. You can almost kind of think about it like it's an aquarium with an even heavier plant component in there, but not quite like deep ocean underwater plant type of uh, environment. Another arium that I've seen is called a formicarium, and basically that's an ant farm. Um, and I'm sure you've uh, seen some of those ant farms. It's kind of like there's some kind of substrate in there, like dirt or sand or something, or even gel. And you have a colony of ants that will just dig into that substrate and create their own ant colony. And that's essentially what an ant farm is. It's a container that's intended to raise ants, uh, which is a formicarium. Now I want to talk about that last one that this commenter mentioned, something called a faunarium. And I tried doing a little bit of research on this. From what I can tell, this isn't really a common word that's used. Uh, to me, it kind of seems like it's a made up word. From doing some Google searches, I only saw results coming up for exoterra faunarium, and I didn't see it used in any other context outside of that. So what that kind of makes me think is that this is a word that's kind of like just made up for uh, marketing purposes uh, for this very specific product. And I'm guessing this commenter saw this out there and was kind of wondering what that was all about. All about. But from reading that product description, it sounds like it's in a container meant to raise all types of different uh, life in there. I think the intent they're trying to get across is that it's intended to be suitable for all sorts of different life, like reptiles, amphibians, mice, lizards, and whatever. And I think they couldn't come up with an arium word that accurately described what they were trying to do, so they just made up a new word and called it a fun arium. And to me that seems a little bit strange because typically the intent behind these arium words is to describe the container as being suitable for a specific type of thing. But in this case, I think how they describe the product, it's something that's intended to be all purpose, all sorts of life. And that sounds kind of, in kind of intuitive because these arium words typically refer to something very, a little bit more specific whereas they're trying to make something that's a little bit more all-purpose. But if it works for them, then I don't see any problem with doing that. So that pretty much covers all the examples I wanted to show you. So essentially, the point I'm trying to get across here is the thing that they all have in common is that they're some kind of container of some sort or some kind of enclosure. And where they differ is what is the intent behind that enclosure or container? What types of life are they intending to support? or are they trying to optimize for, and that will give you kind of an idea of the type of conditions that you'll find inside of that container. But that's pretty much it for this video. Hopefully that answered your question. Hopefully you know how the different ariums work. If that helped you out, feel free to leave a like on the video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.